Yeah, this is a short tutorial video uh, just to share information on how to set up build root and how to initiate uh, image build for BeagleBone Black. So first step would be to download uh, the build root package, the build system package. Uh, you can do it in two ways. One, you can go to the website of build root and then you could download the tar image or the other option is to clone the repo from their git. So currently I'm just looking to download the tar package so you'll find a buildroot.org that's the website download this particular tar.bz package we're choosing the latest version for this build the latest version happens to be 2019-024 so you have two options here one option is the bz2 image the other option is the gzip so choose any of them based on your choice this one is a latest stable release and this one happens to be a long term release. I'll pick the latest stable release here. So I'm picking tar.gset. This will now download and once the download is done, untar it into a fresh folder and we'll look into how to configure. It'll take some time for this to download so I'll just hang on So this is the package uh, downloaded from buildroot.org. I'll untar this. This will get untarred. So these are, this is how the folder looks like. And this is the build system for the build root. So we'll quickly run through a set of commands that we need to initiate and trigger this particular build system to create bootable images for BeagleBone Black. BeagleBone Black is an ARM uh, architecture SOC. So the step one in build root would be to verify the board support. Build root has out of box support for various boards. So we need to check which of the boards actually are supported and then configure build root framework to generate the images for that particular board. And to carry out step one, we use this particular make tool build root build system runs with the make scripts and it uses make as an auto build tool. So I'll just use a command make help. Make help shows up all possible make targets. So here you could see complete list of make targets. And in this particular list of make targets, we have an option to actually look into what all boards it supports by default. And that particular make target command is list def configs. So what I'll do now, in the same folder, the build root home folder, I'll just trigger this particular command. It lists up the configuration scripts or the configurations files in the build root framework, which actually support various ports. So build root framework is actively maintained and each release would increase the number of ports it supports. And for each specific board, you might find a specific configuration file here. We are looking for BeagleBone Black build. So if you look through this particular list here, you find the few entries which are relevant to BeagleBone Black. We'll need to choose appropriate one. A couple of these entries are basically for support of GUIs in case your board has an LCD. Right now we are trying to create image for the board that boots up and oh, we are not using an LCD. So I'm going for the normal BeagleBone def config to support the default boards. 
So this particular def config is the default configuration file which will configure the build root framework to generate images for Beaglebone Black. So what I'll do next, step two, I'll apply that particular configuration file. So here the config file has been applied and once config file is applied, as you would see, it will generate this message of writing all the configuration into dot config. Now this is very identical to kernel build system. So now the third step, whatever default config is applied, you might want to change it and we'll require to update it according to our recipes and our application configuration, kernel configuration needs. And to carry out that step, I'll do this make menu config. Make menu config now loads up the uh, configurations of default.config file and then shows up a list that shows the menu options of build root build system. So target options, the default make file might have made selections of target options. Beaglebone Black runs on ARM, so here the choice of architecture is ARM. The target binary file format is ELF. The target architecture variant is Cortex-A8, which happens to be ARM-based SOC on Beaglebone Black, which is AM335X. Then the ABI, which is to be supported, we have different kinds of ABIs, hard floating point and soft floating point. The choice here has been for hard floating point. And ARM instruction set, normally for embedded Linux, we don't prefer thumb instruction set. We always go for the default native ARM instruction. So these choices have been done by the default configuration file and there is no reason to change these. Now what we need to do is we need to now choose the tool chain configuration. We need to choose which kernel we intend to build for the target. We also need to make choices of what kind of applications we need. Now all these configurations we can do by choosing appropriate options in rest of these menus. So let me go into tool chain menu. Tool chain menu now contains listing of all the components which make up a tool chain. We discussed about the components in the previous session. The components include uh, things like C library, GCC, compiler project, bin utils, and then kernel headers, whichever kernel you intend to build, specific headers for that particular kernel and possible uh, an optional debugger tool. So here I need to so choose versions of these packages. Now you might want to always go with the latest versions and that is the reason why you don't go with the default config and then you make changes once you apply default config. So here the first option shown up here, the first option is uh, to choose the C library. We discussed about this, there are multiple options. We have, a, some, we have a library called UCLibc, widely known and used on the embedded devices. Um, there is a next generation version of UCLibc. There is a glibc, which is fully customizable and a bit heavier on memory footprint. And the current uh, uh, build root framework uh, versions support also this library called Musil. Musil is fast growing as a choice of library for embedded Linux systems. So here let me go with the default right now, which is UCLibc. I'll not change this. And then the second option would be to choose the kernel headers. Now kernel headers, you need to choose an appropriate version of kernel. And this should be compatible with the version of kernel that we intend to build and deploy on the target. So let, let me go into latest one. Let's try and do it for 5.1. So I'll choose a 5.1.x. So custom kernel header series for 5.1.x. Then we'll come down here. This is the configuration file of uclibc, which is a default configuration file. We don't intend to change this. Let's keep it as is. White character support. Uh, we have this white character data type. So in case you need support for that, you need to select that. Make sure that you select this option. Pthread implementation should be native post threading library. This option is by default. Ensure it is selected. Stack protection, thread library debugging. We don't need these features as of now, so disable them. Then we have a compile and install uclibc utilities. Select the option. Then we have bin utils. Now here you need to choose latest version. Uh, this is the version of Linker. Binutils package, if you recall, contains Linker, Assembler, and all those files. So here I've selected the latest version of Binutils. The compiler also, the current GCC version is 8.x. We also have a 7.x. Let me choose 8.x here. 
and then if you need support for C++ you can do all these selections here these are compiler package sel package configuration selections so at this time we are just creating image a bootable image a minimal image for Beagle Bone Black so I'm not selecting any of these options but re if required you could actually enable any of the options required here then we have an option to s enable MMU this is to be by selected which is by default enabled in case it's not make sure it's selected and then these are the options so make sure that you have made appropriate selections of the latest packages exit out of this menu then you have an option of system configuration in the system configuration menu we have configuration of build root we don't change much of the system configuration so here actually you can mention about uh, the init system that you want to use we discussed about the init system uh, you can have init system from system 5 or busybox and so forth so here we choose the init system which is default busybox we'll leave it unchanged and rest of the options there's no need to change any of them we'll leave all these options unchanged since it's our first build then we have the kernel so here we need to specify the kernel uh, version that we intend to compile and deploy on the target and default configuration of the kernel so here I'll choose a kernel configuration I'll go for the latest 5.1 kernel and this particular latest 5.1 kernel would be fetched from kernel.org so kernel configuration choose the default intrigued configuration we'll discuss in the classroom about what this means but choose the default entry configuration which happens to be OMAP 2 plus and then kernel binary format you can choose a compression format or uncompression format the multiple options here the default one is that image will leave it unchanged kernel compression in case you need compression for the kernel you can specify that here also we leave it unchanged and device tree blob DTB even this will leave it unchanged so all these options will be left unchanged any kernel extensions any third-party drivers or any third-party integrations into kernel like real-time Linux patches or uh, the patches of RT real-time Linux zero my and so forth if any are there you can add up those or any proprietary drivers if you have the TFTP uh, the GUI drivers which are usually proprietary you can mention those so here we are not specifying any of these we are not selecting any of these and then we have the options of selecting target packages which includes the applications for the target root FS now here we are using a framework build root falls back on a framework called busybox for this so we'll leave all these unchanged we'll just have the defaults as they are whatever the defaults are chosen by the default config file will have the default packages which are selected so it seems to be minimal selection so not much of uh, existing so we'll leave all this unchanged there's no change here then you could uh, the file system images ext2 ext4 we'll do the we'll, we'll go with that default ones no changes here bootloader the bootloaders their options you can choose to build baybox uboot and so on default one happens to be for the uboot and build system of the uboot is kconfig and custom version or you can choose the latest 2019 so i'll choose the latest 2019 and use a default entry board config file for the U-Mode. We'll discuss about what all these steps actually mean and what it does at the back uh, a little later. In the sessions we'll do that discussion. So make these choices. So once these choices are done, save the configuration and after saving configuration our step will be make this make command will now start the process of fetching all the packages and then initiating the entire process of integrating all these packages creating a toolchain 
and then engaging that particular tool chain to create kernel image, root FS image and bootloader image. The end result of this, the end result of this whole process, it might take around 40 minutes to one hour time depending on your network speeds. Make sure that when you run this you have the network connection. So it might take uh, 40 to 40 minutes to one hour depending on the machine speeds and memory and network speed. And once done, the output will be in the output folder. You'd have your output folder. In the output folder, you would find all the result resultant images. So here I've initiated the process. It will take around 40, 45 minutes. So trigger this process as is, as, as demonstrated here and then outputs would be in the output folder. In the session we'll discuss about the images generated and how these images were generated and we'll also discuss about the procedure to deploy and test them.